air conditioning on this 2010 Acura MDX. So what do we have here? Hood open, I just connected up. Customer complaint, does not cool. You know how some people say, oh, you could tell if the system is charged, check if it's charged and it's good because the pressure, when you hook up, you can tell it's charged. Well, we got 107 PSI on the high and low side here. So that's a lot of pressure. So shouldn't it be good and charged? Doesn't that mean something? And well, that means that uh, it's not over 440 PSI, so it would not be cutting off the high pressure switch to stop the compressor from working. And it's not under say 20 or 22 PSI, whatever manufacturer uses as a spec to turn off the air conditioning if it's really low on refrigerant. So 107 PSI, high side, low side. So we must be really good. That's a big high pressure. Isn't that what I hear by some of these YouTubers on YouTube? Uh, the YouTube professionals, yes. So let's start this MDX up. And let's see where it's at. Where are we going here? Oh, 17, 14 on the low side, nine, eight. We don't even have a high idle because it's already warm. That's why the pressure was high. It's only 68 degrees outside, but the engine's warm, the inside of the car's warm, so the pipes are warm. So the gas that is inside the pi pipes expands and makes the pressure go up. So we got 11 on the low side. Look at our superheat. 78 superheat, 77 superheat. Now our subcooling says 11. I don't believe that. Uh, this is where you get in trouble on automotive compared to residential. There's issues. This is not an accumulator system. This is an expansion valve system. And it's a dual evaporator system. You see this pipe right here? You see this pipe right here? This pipe goes to the evaporator behind the dash for the front. This pipe goes back here and then it goes down underneath the vehicle to an evaporator in the rear. This has two evaporators on it. So we see our superheat is at 75. Now I've had commercial and residential guys say, oh, it's a transmit, I mean, it's a uh, expansion valve system. We don't use superheat, we use subcooling. Okay, so I got a 17, 18 subcooling, but I got a 78 superheat. So uh, let's see how these experts on YouTube uh, who read books that expansion uh that superheat is only for piston systems orifice tube tap tube systems and superheat is only for expansion valve systems we're going to come back in the next video because i'm going to recover this refrigerant out and we're going to fill this up 100 percent and we're going to look at screw the pressures we don't want pressures we don't need no freaking pressures we need superheat and yes this is an expansion valve system Let's come back and see what happens.